here with Don Walker, CEO of Magna International. Uh, Don, before the break, we were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, how we get people focused around a common set of goals, and I just wanted to chat with you a little bit more about that. Um, clearly, there are financial goals within each one of your divisions. Um, you've, through the fair uh, for the committees, you've given people the opportunity to provide some feedback. What are some of the other ways in which you go about really making sure that people are aligned on what they're working towards as opposed to kind of just working in their own direction? You know, pr probably the, the most important thing is, is uh, explaining to people how business runs and what's going on in their operating division. So are they winning new contracts? If they don't, then why not? Uh, what's coming up? Launches. So it, it, communication, uh, having an open dialogue, listening to people's suggestions. And many of our plants, because we're decentralized, we let people have the freedom to, to do what, what works in, in their particular division. So how do you share that information with the employees in your organization? We have uh, annual, or sorry, we have monthly uh, communication meetings. Right. And uh, they're not all the same everywhere, but you, you, you cover all the normal things. But uh, depending on, we may have a plant that has 50 people, in which case everybody knows everybody else. We may have a plant that has 900 people. So you have multiple meetings and, and uh, the size allows people to have some dialogue. You almost need to break plants down into, into plants within a plant. Uh, you know, we have recognition programs for sure for people's uh, years of service, but we'll also have some plants that have gain sharing. So if our, our objective is to improve quality or throughput by a certain amount, we'll set a target, tell people where, what, where we're doing for that, uh, and then we'll have recognition programs that uh, can be financial, uh, have a lot of social events with people, and quite often the fairness committees will uh, in the division will be the, the champions of, of a lot of the social uh, functions that are going on. You know, pe people understand for the most part that nobody's guaranteed a job. Mm -hmm. uh, a government can't guarantee it, a union can't guarantee it, a company can't guarantee it. So if you get people that understand that and they understand the realities of having to win the business competitively and treat the customer right and, and over deliver to what they're expecting, then you can get a lot of people really engaged and they and they, they see it as part, part of their company. Yeah. How, how much of the information that you share, um, and I guess what I'm getting at is how freely do you share the information? Because a lot of companies keep it very, very close to the vest, and so the employees really don't know what's going on. They, there's always this sense of, am I being told the truth? I get the sense you're a little bit more free with information than that. Well, we're a public company, so all of our information is public, and, we, and we'll share that with people in our newsletter quarterly. Uh, different divisions will share different uh, amounts of information, but uh, I would hope that nobody anywhere in the company thinks they're not being told the truth about things. Uh, if it is, that would probably be flushed out through our surveys, through feedback, through hotline calls. And there's no point, if you have, if you have management that's going to lie to the people they're working with, then you've got the wrong management. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you ultimately, we, we'll even... Um, uh, get feedback on people to make sure that they feel comfortable with who, uh, who's working in the plant. If you've got a hundred people in a plant all trying to work together to be competitive and, and have job security and make more money and more profit sharing, and you've got two people that really don't want to be there, they're bad apples or they don't want to work or they're lazy, they don't come to work or they're negative, uh, my advice to the management team is go talk to the person, explain we're trying, what we're trying to do here. If they don't want to be a good employee and work towards being more competitive and work towards uh, getting along with everybody else, then we'd, we'd prefer they just leave. And if they don't want to leave, then we will fire them. And we yeah. go, we'll go through progressive discipline, give people a warning, because, but everybody else wants that too. Yeah. You, you don't want to have a few people bad apples because they drag everybody else down and they make it miserable for everybody. And so uh, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to be very proactive with communication and uh, making people understand how important it is that we all work together. Well, and, and I think that clarity is essential. I mean, the reality is that different people are always going to have different values of, of what they expect from a job, what they expect from life. And you're only going to feel comfortable if you work in an environment with other people that share those values. And one of the things about Magna is, is those values seem to be pretty clear. I mean, we work hard, we share in our, you know, our mutual success, we support one another, and if somebody's not pulling their weight, it always amazes me that, you know, if you play in a sports team and your winger doesn't come back, 
you don't sort of send a memo to the coach and you don't sort of, you know, you yell and scream at the person to get their butt back on defense. But yet we walk into a work environment and fundamentally when someone isn't doing their job, they're letting the team down and yet we all stand back and we don't want to say anything. So how does the management team from your perspective deal with that? Because you're always going to find those kind of people. I mean, is there any sort of sort of techniques that you can share with some of our viewers is to when you find that bad apple when you find that person and, and let me rephrase it it's not necessarily they're a bad apple it's just they're not aligned with the values of the organization when you find that person any exp any thoughts you can share of how you deal with that well I, I would say we have like any other company we have supervisory training and we'll talk about how to treat people and uh, so people in theory should uh, should all be highly motivated to take action if something's not working I think in some companies, because there's not profit sharing, because people are sort of saying, okay, you manage that area, but you know, you don't really know what the profitability, you don't really know, it's more like a job rather than, than ownership in a business. Uh, and I've seen this in other companies, people go, it's just not worth the headache, I'm just not going to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, if anything, I would say our management team, because they have ownership and they get paid in profitability, sometimes they can be too aggressive. So we want to make sure you're treating people fairly. Somebody may have something going on at home. They're not, they don't want to tell people about. So we, and so we want to make sure that if somebody is mistreated, if there's favoritism uh, or somebody gets fired unfairly, they can call the hotline. We'll take a look at it objectively. But I would say over the years, I'm hoping that we're, we continue to get better. And that's the feedback we get in most of the surveys. But you, know, you always have, um, you get managers under stress too. So He's, uh, he, he's got all sorts of pressures from work and then somebody's having a bad day and he might yeah. snap at them. So it's a real fine balance, uh, balancing act and it's pretty difficult to train somebody to treat people well. You kind of, you, a lot of people will get that when they're, when they're growing up with their parents. Yeah. So people can make slight differences, uh, but you may have a fantastic technical person who's good for the business, but if they're not as, motiv as much of a motivator or leader, then you'd want to put somebody with him as an assistant manager who can fulfill that role. And we have HR people in, in each of the plants. So we're never perfect, nobody's ever perfect. Uh, one, one very interesting uh, thing to look at is people will react differently, whether they're in Canada, southern states, Mexico, Brazil, Korea, <coughs> Russia, China, India. Uh, there's different expectations from management and there's different expectations from the workforce too. So you have to have a culture that can kind of be molded in, given the different geographic regions you're working in. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, I mean, the reality is, is that even if you go coast to coast in this country, you'll find those kind of differences. Um, but you touched on something that's close to my heart, and that's the concept that I call hiring for character versus competence. I mean, because you're right, you can't, you, you can't teach someone to smile. If they're not a happy person to begin with, I mean, no amount of training is going to change that. So when you start looking for people to fit within your culture, um, the magna culture, you know, what are some of the things that you initially look at as the key leadership competencies that you would be looking for? Well, it's interesting because uh, people tend to look for somebody like themselves, I find. If you put a finance person in charge of an operation, they will like to hire finance people. Legal, hire legal. Operations will hire operations. So a salesperson will like a salesperson type of personality. So we, we have rolled out um, a leadership development system, which is the first time we've done it consistently globally. Uh, and we have identified sort of the technical areas that we're looking for. We're looking for the, the uh, leadership areas we're looking for. We're looking for their ability to deal with the customers. So we have defined it in various categories. And obviously you want one type of person who's gonna specialize in sales versus finance versus HR versus operations. But for our senior managers, you want to have them fairly balanced. We're very strong believers in having pretty technically competent people mm -hmm. run our plants because n people can't tell them the story. So the, the, the real balancing act is find a, a technical, technically competent person who also ha is a good leader, can deal with people, or get that balance in the management team. So how do you go about it? We've just got about 30 seconds before we're going to take our next break, but um, is there any sort of special tricks or techniques that you could suggest for people in terms of how you hire for the character side of things versus the competence side of things? You know, I think checking people's references is, is, is pretty good, but you know, quite often we like to have two or three people make an uh, interview, and we don't have an HR department typically that hires. It's mm -hmm. usually the, the, the management. If you have two or three people meet with somebody, you get a pretty good feel. You can sometimes 
make a bad call, check a reference, but for the most time, you can get a pretty good feel if you spend time with people, whether they're gonna treat people well or not. All right. Well, let's take a break and we'll okay. come back and talk some more.